Hello, welcome to Awaken Your Creative Self. I am your host, Claudia Chan. I'm so happy to bring on today's guest expert. She is an artist, calligrapher, and educator based in Hong Kong. Her happiest days are spent in her studio creating art and snuggling with her puppy, Pepper, and being able to mentor uh, creative entrepreneurs. She loves working with other aspiring creatives and starting their own online business. I'd like to introduce you to Joyce Chang. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome on the show. I have been an admirer of your work for a very long time, so it's my absolute pleasure to have you with us today. <laughs> so Joyce, could you share with our viewers a little bit more about who you are and how you got to where you are now? Um, okay, so my story with kind of my creative business um, started about five years ago. So my background is in architecture. Um, I'm an architect, I'm a trained architect and licensed. Um, and I basically studied abroad in the States for um, you know, a good handful of years. I came back after I got my master's in architecture, worked in an architecture firm here for three years. Um, and during that time, I was pursuing a professional license, but I, I also picked up uh, calligraphy as a hobby, um, as a, just, just like for fun. Um, but in that year, in the last year that I was um, in the architecture firm, I um, decided to try to make some money from it and I turned it into a very humble small business um, that I was running on the side and shortly after I attained my architecture license um, I decided to take a break um, from working uh, for three months and just that kind of a uh, more ample time in my schedule allowed me to I guess pursue more creative projects meet a few more people in in, in Hong Kong locally and it organically turned into a business that was full-time and I never returned back to working for someone else. Um, but calligraphy came to me as um, a creative outlet. So even though I was working as an architect, a lot of the work that I was doing, I think was very corporate, you know, it was a very corporate environment. I learned a lot there, but it really didn't, I didn't feel fulfilled, although I was doing creative work all day. So, you know, I defaulted to calligraphy, which was something that I, um, found on Instagram through a few videos and then I picked up some pens, you know, from my stationery store and I just fell in love. I fell in love with the process of my alone time and I had control over the creative work and I just felt so passionate about it. Um, and so, you know, fast forward, I think for four years full time now, um, I've ventured into doing art as well, like fine art, um, as well as a bit of jewelry. Um, and I am also, you know, venturing into education now for other creative entrepreneurs, just because my own journey has been filled with joy, a lot of challenges, but also a lot of like, you know, small successes. And I really want to be able to share this, um, my journey and also everything I've learned over the couple of years to see if, you know, it will be helpful to other, you know, aspiring um, entrepreneurs in the creative field. So that's kind of my background. <laughs> That is so awesome. Now, I just want to step back up one step because um, you said you actually studied architecture. What was it that actually made you want to go into that field? Um, so I've always loved art um, as a kid, um, but I'm also really good at the sciences. And actually, I come, so I'm from Hong Kong, right? I come from a very traditional Chinese family. Uh, and my parents um, have told me from very young that, you know, I should pursue professional degrees. So, you know, lawyer, you know, architecture, uh, doctor, you know, there's only a couple there. So, you know, naturally, I think given my two interests, science and architecture, I, uh, sorry, science and arts, it drew me to the field of architecture, although I didn't really know what it was. Um, and to backtrack a little, I actually did a pure science degree in undergrad um, at UCLA. And then, and then I did the architecture as a master's degree. Um, all in all, there was a lot of schooling. I enjoyed all of it. Um, and I would redo architecture school again, even given what I can see now, just because I've picked up a lot of like design eye and design elements. Is it necessary to run a creative business? I don't think so. Um, but it definitely is part of my story and part of my work now. Um, but that's kind of how I got into architecture. Um, and how I got out of it was because purely, I think, between schooling of architecture and actually working as an architect, there is quite a disconnect, you know, um, 
you're dealing with real life buildings and lots of consultants and that kind of creative freedom you had in school when everything was designed on paper. Um, that's the part I fell in love with. So, you know, when I was in a corporate world, I didn't feel like I, I had that opportunity anymore, which is what drove me to, um, to exit of that field, but bring what I learned um, to, and apply it in a different scale. Yes, just want to touch upon how you were talking about how as Asian families, we're so big on you need to have your schooling, you need to have your um, specialty. And that's how I am as a like radiation therapist too. Would you mind just touching upon on like what your thoughts are in regards to our thinking in terms of creativity? Like what does creativity actually mean to you? And would you change the way that society think about creativity? I mean, so I think, you know, normally when you think about the word creativity, you think like art, right? Crafts, you know, like very, it could be DIY, you know, just like art, art, artiste, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think my, my creativity, my take on creativity, I think, you know, stemming from my family background and the way I was brought up, I thought that it was always a field that was not that seriously taken, you know, like that you would take that seriously. I think because, um, it's, it's hard to explain and different people look at it differently. It's subjective to the viewer, you know, and it's not really like one of those fields where you would see a lot of dollar signs next to it in terms of your salary and the reward. Um, but, you know, as I, you know, got into the architecture field, as I started my own creative business, it's altered, you know. I think of creativity so much more than just what you create. I think that's absolutely a part of it. It's, it's an expression, it's an emotion, it's just a different kind of, yeah, expression. Um, but I also think, you know, you can be creative with your career. You can be creative with the life you want to live. You know, you can be creative with, you know, all of that. And it's, I think it's more like, you know, when I think about creativity now, it's, you know, thinking about all your passions and what, you know, digging deep knowing exactly what is it that you want to do in life, what fulfills you and thinking about creative ways to attain those things yet being practical. So I still believe very strongly in the fundamental values that my parents taught me and this, and in Hong Kong, this Chinese society is very practical. So I still believe in that. I'm not, you know, into the whole, like, all fluffy and and idealism, but I think there is creative ways to make money. There's creative ways to, you know, build a career that you actually enjoy, that you want to wake up for and you go to sleep excited about the next day. Um, And that is something that I felt like I am putting a lot of time and effort and seeing success in, in the last few years, although the, the career that I've chosen now, it's alternative, you know, it's not what I was brought up to remember and to to pursue. But I think that I've been able to, you know, take all my puzzle pieces and be creative with the way on how I continue moving forward and walk forward, you know, to build a career of my own. So yeah. That is super powerful because I also believe that like in terms of creativity, it's just about a different way of thinking in your current situation. And you can be just even working right now at a job, but being able to see a little bit of a possibility or another potential or another way of looking at things that's going to make your life a little bit different. And I think that's what creativity comes down to is being able to see the possibility outside of what you're encountering right now. So, and thank you for sharing that with us. Now, um, I'm just interested because um, I know that you um, went from architecture to um, your creative business and you had a you took a few months off would you be able to encounter a little bit of like like your feelings and thought during that time during that transition right so um absolutely so i think let's backtrack even a bit more when i was working as an architect made my first landed my first job which actually was doing on-site calligraphy service for joe malone which is a perfume brand I mean, I was shocked. I was like, oh, someone wants to hire me for this. And, you know, that initial excitement is like honeymoon period. But, you know, it quickly became, once you started making money, all of that, it quickly became, oh, you know, I started having these little thoughts in my head. I was like, but do you think I could actually make this a real thing? And the more, the more time that passes, actually, the more pressure I put on myself because I felt like, oh, you know, I've been doing this for a year now. I should be more successful than I was six months ago, etc. And, you know, I think it, 
you know, that's also part of the reason why I was adamant on getting a license is because in my mind, for my own mindset, it was important for me to have a foundation that I can like, you know, it's my cushion. If it doesn't work out, I can go back. Right. But actually, to be very honest and transparent, I've never, never regretted my decision. Not even a single day did I want to go back. But I am still happy that I, you know, did all of that. But I think the transition, you know, was as I said, it was quite organic. I was really going to just take a break. Um, but once I took a break, I had all these projects I wanted to do, you know, so I now had the time to do it. Um, and, but, you know, even though I said I took three months break, I actually didn't break. What I did was I took three months to build a lot of network with people. I did a lot of style shoots for collaborations, all of that. And then, and then in my mind, in my brain, I already knew that, okay, this is going to be full time. And I am, I was already full time. But in terms of everybody else around me, my closest friends, you know, my, my parents, you know, my brother, everybody, like I didn't tell them it was full time, although I made a decision um, inside already. And I think it was because I was scared. I was scared of how people would think about me, um, you know, in terms of going through seven years of schooling and then, you know, <laughs> spend three years getting a license and then goodbye, you know, because I didn't feel like it was goodbye. I feel like I was just taking my skills and being creative, you know, with what I'm going to do with it. But I didn't know how to explain that to people. And I felt a lot of people didn't even give me judgment yet, but I was already judging myself on behalf of them right so i think that was uh so it took me another i would say from me quitting my job to me actually saying hey you know i'm a calligrapher i'm a full-time calligrapher now it took about six to eight months for me to actually own up to it um mm -hmm. and i think that that's that's the kind of like thing i feel like i wished like now in my position after five years i would like to make an impact to tell people they don't need to do that right you know like um, if people around you, they're judging is only because they don't understand. So what you need to do is communicate more. You know, you need to, um, you need to be very clear about what is it that you want people to see you as and what you're doing. You know, as long as you communicate that really clearly, people are going to listen, you know, and, and understand after three times, four times, five times. And then in no time, you know, your inner circle, these people that you're super close to, which happened to me, you know, they're going to be, become your biggest supporter, even though in the beginning, they might be the most skeptical. But if you like, you know, for me, right, if I didn't know how to communicate, and I didn't feel confident about what I wanted to be, why should I expect people around me to believe that? Right. So that's kind of my thought process in the first, basically my first year of business. Um, uh, I mean, I went to different people and I would say different titles depending on what I think I would get the least questions from. So, you know, maybe to people who are very close to my age and are, you know, into the online world. Uh, yeah, I'll tell them I'm a calligrapher and I'm trying to start my own business. But, you know, when I speak to elders, especially with, you know, my friend's parents or something like that. I will use terms like, oh, I'm a graphic designer, which I'm not. Um, but I thought that by doing wedding invitations, there is a graphic element where I was like, I'm not really lying, but, but that is a more easily understood title. So I won't get many more questions. And if you really dig deep into this mindset, it just means that I was scared to own up to what I was. And I actually didn't believe in my own success and in my own, I was putting myself down, which is why I wouldn't own up to the titles. Um, and that shift for me in the last few years has been, you know, I see that shift in mindset. I see the shift in my business. It grows bigger and bigger as I get rid of these limiting beliefs that actually just exist within myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. This mindset thing is super interesting because it is one of the first things you need to, um, kind of fix but it's like the hardest thing to ever fix <laughs> because as you yeah. said, it's like yeah. you need to believe in yourself, but you can't even prove to yourself yet that you can do it. So <laughs> it just like, it's, it's a process that it just takes so long just because you need to work through all those little different elements. And, and definitely it is one of the, one of the things that is super interesting to go through. I think these kind of mindset, like you never get rid of them, right? You know how to handle them. Um, and like, you know, put a stop to it earlier than later. Um, but I always think it's a work in progress. And 
I think the key that I find the key to get, uh, to bat battling these mindset, you know, limiting belief mindsets is to celebrate not just the big results, right? Making, you know, this amount of money or, you know, getting another 10,000 followers, but rather celebrate the little wins. So, you know, if today you learn how to use an email provider, that's a win, right? If today you, you learn how to talk about what you do to one random stranger in a much more eloquent way, that's a win. So I actually think celebrating little successes is super important to growing confidently, faster and stronger. Yeah. Yes, definitely all the little wins, it, it adds up so that you don't, because as human, we're so used to just seeing on the negative side. So it's good to actually remind us that you did something good today. You did something a little bit better than yesterday. So that's definitely a very good way to change our mindset. Now, I know that you have a lot of different artistic products and services that you offer in your own business. Would you mind just sharing like a little bit of a story of how those creative ideas came to generating things like your jewelry or your paintings and things like that? Yeah, so my bread and butter was calligraphy, always has been. Um, but I think um, I was very focused um, in terms of only pursuing modern calligraphy and not all the other types. Um, I think it resonates most with my style and it's just where my interest is, right? So I, you know, in terms of calligraphy, I spent a good two years really trying all creative projects. So like, you know, if you're talking about weddings, you know, corporate, um, you know, products where you write on, you know, personalize on all that kind of stuff. I've done a lot of them. And that's how, you know, by doing the whole breadth of work, I knew exactly what, what are the things I like and what is it I don't. But it's also because I explored so much calligraphy and I was able to get enough inquiries and jobs to be, have a full schedule. Um, you know, I remember it was a Christmas about, I think, three, three years ago. I was so, so limited by my time in order to do calligraphy and fulfill my orders, especially because Christmas season, you know, is, is a good season, I think, for creatives. So my hands, I couldn't even pick up my phone. So like, I, I realized that, I, but I do want to scale. I want to grow. I want this to become a real career and not a short term, you know, two year project kind of thing. So, you know, that what, that's what led me to my jewelry. And the reason is because of that is I was making completely active income, meaning that when I stop working, if I travel, if I sleep, I'm not making any money, right? So I, and I, I teach this in my membership, um, but basically active income, active passive income and passive income. So I wanted to take a next step, which was active passive income, where parts of it was pre-designed. So a jewelry collection would be. So I based it off my calligraphy script. I, um, made you know all the designs modeled everything you know from my architectural record i know how to 3d print basically finish all that and then the passive part um is is all the work done up front right the active part is when i get orders i list it online is the, the fulfilling and the a constant marketing you know for the same kind of jewelry line but that's what i wanted to do i wanted to create my own product line that i only have to design once and i can sell forever as long as there's demand and see how I thought about that. And the reason I chose jewelry was just because um, it is easy to enter the market. Um, it's also very small, so I don't have to have a whole warehouse for it, um, et cetera. So that's, that's it. the jewelry part is more just because it was of ease and I felt like it was something that uh, was a good MOQ. Um, but actually what happened with the jewelry was I did it for a whole year, you know, it's still in my shop, et cetera, but I've actively decided to not spend as much effort in that anymore. And I'm actually not gonna create any more new jewelry design. And the reason is because I went back to my core values, right? I went back to what makes me feel good, what I want my business to be about. And I realized that constant marketing and an unlimited quantity kind of product doesn't resonate with me or the clients that I want to attract. So it's not that I'm gonna just give up this project. It's still in my shop, as I said, but I just knew that it was an avenue that I've tried it, dipped my toes, and I know, hey, you know, I might go the other way. And that's kind of how art came along. As I've said earlier, you know, I've always been interested in art. I can do lots of different kinds of art and calligraphy is just one type of art form I picked up later in life. But I also love watercolors, you know, abstract, all kinds of stuff. So I've always been not hesitant in terms of expanding my creativity and the different kind of mediums I use. Um, and so that's what I did. And like, I just decided to do more like pure artwork. So I do ink art, resin art, and also watercolor art. They're all abstracts. 
Um, and as long as I feel like it falls under my brand, it falls under my persona, then I feel like it has a place in my business. So that's how I went into art. And the reason is because art is very exclusive, right? It's very original. Um, and that's exactly what is the opposite of what my jewelry was. Um, and actually with art, even though creating original artwork is a type of active income, but there's so many avenues of what you can do with your actual artwork. Once you digitize it, you can license it, which then becomes passive income, right? So, um, it's, as you can see, I think my business expanded into different realms over the years, definitely not all in one day. And it's because through doing different kinds of ventures, I realized something about myself and realized something about my creativity and learn something more about running a business and slowly it evolves so, because it's a living machine, right? Like a business is a living machine. I'm a living machine. So, um, but that's kind of my journey so far. That's so awesome to hear you talk about that. Just because I think a lot of people see different things on Instagram and they see that for this person, they're doing this and they're successful. And then they're seeing other person doing something like that and they're successful. And then they're like, oh, maybe if I pursue this, this, uh, this is what I'm going to get success or the other one way around. But at the end of the day, you are, are the person who needs to say, yes, I really like to create this because this is my core value as you touched upon. And I think that's super important because at the end of the day, if there is no more audience, no more business, like what is it that you want to create that's going to influence other people or speak to other people? And I think what you, what you did there was really fantastic. Yeah, I mean, business is your, if you're coming out to make your own business, especially if it's creative business, just be authentic, right? Like, if not, you should just work for someone else. If you love it, then you do it, right? So, yeah. yeah. For sure. Okay, so you have mentioned that you have a membership, and I know that you started Aspire back in July. Could you share mm -hmm. with us what it is and how it came about? So Aspire is like, like Claudia was saying, is a membership. So it's kind of like Netflix, you pay by the month kind of thing. Um, it's a monthly subscription of content that is focused on how to grow uh, your creative business um, with a lot of focus and clarity. So it's to fast track your growth, but in a way that, you know, um, you kind of get rid of all the clutter um, online. And um, the reason it's a membership and not a full course is because I think this goes back to kind of like how I digest and how I felt over the last few years is a course gives you a deep dive into a certain topic, let's say email marketing or, you know, learning actually a technical skill or something like that. But a lot of times you're left with all this content. Okay. You know, these are all great, but how do I actually do it in my own business? Right. And I think that is the part where people get stuck in and then it doesn't happen. And then, you know, they're not any closer to actually realizing their creative dream as they were before, except that they know that there's all these things I need to do. I just don't know how to do it. And so, you know, the, I created a membership is because the way it's crafted in the membership is I deliver very bite-sized content based on all relevant to how you can grow a creative business. Um, but, it's very actionable. So I provide a lot of like worksheets, workbooks, but it's also the community that has the momentum in order for you to actually make small little steps. And therefore like kind of circling back to what I was saying earlier, it's not about the big results, right? Like, oh, this year I made 100K. It's actually about every little step that gets you closer to that 100K. And as long as you have that momentum and you're taking little steps every week, every month, you're definitely going to get to the 100K. So um, that's kind of like my idea behind it. And I think just because over the last five years, I've, you know, continuously offered a lot of my creative work, but I think it's time and I feel calling where um, I want to talk about creative business and empower other budding creatives to do that. Um, because you know, I struggled with, with this journey, you know, like a lot of ups and downs, you know, et cetera, especially in an Asia society where I am, you know, the societal values here, it's kind of, it's kind of taboo, you know, to be very honest until you make it, it's kind of taboo. And so I want to be able to speak to that, you know, and sh show them my example that it's possible, you know, that it doesn't have to be a little inkling antsy business. It can actually be a creative empire. And second of all is that I want to make impact. You know, I'm, I feel beyond just wanting to sell my artwork or sell my work now. I actually want to make impact and change 
even in a small way, change someone else's life. And Aspire is my first program where I am doing that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what it is. I really like the fact that you're giving out these bite-sized pieces versus like a full course. And I, to be honest with you, I've bought so many courses, which I never really finished because like life takes over. And as you said, it's like more like, how do I apply this now? Because there's so many things going on that um, it, it just takes a back seat, right? Like all your courses just takes a back seat and being able to, and as you said, like if you want to, get to a goal, you actually do need to do a little bit of a work every day, every month, so that it can roll you forward. Like, because if you're just standing there, you're just not going to make it, even though you think you're going to make it. And so that's really awesome. And I'm sure a lot of creative businesses or people who are thinking of starting their own businesses would actually find that useful. So for the people who are in the creative business already, is this something related to creativity that you would like to share, they can do or um, apply to their own business? So if you're already running a creative business, something that I see come in is, um, you know, especially if you identify with a certain niche, right? Like you've already crafted your niche and, you know, like, like me, I'm a calligrapher, right? And I only do modern calligraphy. Or you could even be more niche than that. You're a calligrapher who only letter presses, so, right? Something like that. Um, something I, I, a lot of my students tell me um, is that they feel afraid to pursue new creative, creative ideas, projects, ventures, even if it's a little bit different or drastically different, whatever it is, um, because they're, they, they feel like their followers, their audience, they, they don't expect that. And the number one thing I always tell them to remember, and if you're running a creative business, I want you to remember this, is that you run your creative business, right? You are the face behind it. You are the reason it exists, right? Don't let your audience, your followers, whether it's 10, 10,000, 100,000, to dictate where it goes. So if you're a calligrapher, but you feel close to wanting to brand, you want to do more branding projects, that's where your heart is telling you to go, go for it. You know, I wouldn't say you should throw, it, throw away calligraphy and then start a branding tomorrow. You know, there's a smart way to work it all into a business. Do, as a calligrapher, you know, it, do you have all the skills that you need in order to, let's say, be a brand, you know, to be able to do branding for someone? Yes. So I think it's about balancing what you used to do and a little bit of what you want to do and then slowly shift that balance um, as you gain confidence and expertise as you do more projects, etc. So, I mean, never limit, never limit yourself based on what you think people want to see or what people you think people will buy. Um, so, yeah, I, I do encounter that question a lot. So that, that would be what I say about creativity. Keep being creative and don't be afraid to expand. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely something that we have to keep working on just because as much as some of us say, or myself, <laughs> that we don't care about what other people think of us. We still do. In a way, we still do. I think it's also part of our DNA from our history that we have to care. We care about what other people think because it's for survival, right? But it's the unlearning of that concept and thinking, saying that, you know what, now this is your business. This You have full con control and power to take this with you and you can make it whatever the way you want to. And if people don't like it, then who cares, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, you're the one who lives that life and you have to feel fulfilled. And that's totally a very valid point. And thank you for sharing. So before we wrap up, I know that Joyce has a free gift for us. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more about this free gift? Yeah, so I put together a pretty, pretty detailed um, PDF download that you can access from Claudia, where um, it walks you through uh, five stages of building through building a creative career for yourself. So all the way from the very beginning, stage one, where you're a hobbyist, to someone who has a creative empire. And in every stage, I outline the milestones and action steps that you can take in order to move to the next stage and continue building your creative business. And the reason it's lined up in five stages is because there are some things that you need to work on uh, when you're earlier on in your creative business and some other things that you know you need to work on, but now is not the time to do it. Like it's giving you focus and clarity, like I was talking about earlier, um, by giving you action steps um, to do it. So yeah, go check it out. I have to say that PDF is 
very uh, value packed and you need to grab your copy um, and <laughs> and Joyce can you tell us where can people find you um, you can find me on Instagram I think that's where I am most of the time um, I show you a little bit about my dog pepper and also behind the scenes in my studio so that's um, at Joyce Chang with an underscore so Chang is C-H-I-A-N-G. Um, and I think other than that, you can hop onto my website and that's, that's where you can find me. Yeah. So yes, make sure that you check out Joyce's Instagram. Her Instagram is impeccable and it's a serious <laughs> Instagram goal. <laughs> I love hanging out on there. So you see me there daily. Yeah, so make sure that you go to, onto her link if you're interested in in joining Aspire. Make sure that you put your name on the wait list. And I think you mentioned that you're thinking of opening it up again soon. Yes, I think I'm either opening I'm opening it in either mid October or early December. So regardless, is soon in the next few months. Yeah, so you don't want to miss this. So thank you, Joyce, for taking a time out to come on here to share and talk with me. Fun. It's thank an absolute pleasure to chat with you. I really enjoyed it. So thank you so much. And I'll chat with you soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.